Joining me right now is Ohio Congressman, House Judiciary Committee and House Oversight and Reform Committee member Jim Jordan. And Congressman, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks very much for joining good, me. Good to be with you this morning, Maria. Well, sa well said there, Congressman. What was your reaction to how they reacted? Give us your takeaways to that hearing overall. Well, first with Google, it took them a while to just say they weren't going to try to influence the election, which never inspires a lot of confidence. And we know what they did in 2016. There was the now famous email that came out the day after President Trump won. So on November 9th, the email comes out and they talk about what they tried to do to influence the Latino vote in key states. And that's the important qualifier. They were trying to turn out the Latino vote in Nevada and Florida swing states, key states, to help Clinton. And, what, and they tailored their features to, 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 to produce that, that kind of what they thought was going to be the outcome. Obviously, the president did well in those states. Um, so we just want to make sure it's not going to happen again. And more importantly, in the broader sense is, why is there this constant censoring of conservatives? President Trump can't have a tweet on, on, on Twitter, but the leader of Iran talking about striking a blow against American citizens, that's just fine. So that's what Americans find frustrating. And frankly, if they're going to keep doing it, there has to be a remedy. We're going to have to act, and we're looking at what the appropriate action is. Well, what is the appropriate action? That was my next question. I understand yeah. you're not there yet, but, Congressman, what are the options? I mean, there are antitrust concerns. You look at a Google. They, what do they do, 90 percent market share in search? 90 percent. Um, and then you've got this issue about not being a bulletin board, not being a so-called platform. That's why right. they are having these liability protections. Um, does that go away? Because, like one of your colleagues, Devin Nunes, says they're content creators. Yeah. Yeah. No. So you, I think you got three potential options. You got what you just described. Are you a platform or are you more like a publisher? That's what's commonly referred to as Section 230. You got existing antitrust law. The Justice Department is looking at that right now. And then you may need something new. You may need, you may need new uh, uh, Congress to craft new legislation. What I know most importantly is none of it's going to happen. None of it's going to work the right way. None of it's going to address the, the censoring of conservatives if Joe Biden and whoever he picks as vice president get elected in November or if Jerry Nadler st stays as the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. They're not going to want to stop censoring of conservatives. So the most important thing is that Donald Trump get reelected and that the Republicans take back the House so we can actually address this problem. Well, that's right. And you said, you said a minute ago, look, this takes time. I mean, this is not going to happen before the election, Congressman. So what are you going to do about it? Do you think they're going to cheat? Well, you got to keep highlighting it. And look, but there is work going on. The Justice Department, as I said, is looking at the antitrust issue. Uh, we're looking at 230 language. Okay. We've been looking at work with the Senate. But the main thing between now and the next 95, six days, whatever it is now to Election Day, is that we highlight every single time that they are censoring conservatives, every single time they are trying to, to, to not let conservatives speak in this, you know, this cancel, call, uh, cancel culture mob mentality that we see all too often in our, in our social media. Media right now. Well, speaking of cheating, you did an incredible job, you and your colleagues, getting to the bottom of the ambush of General Michael Flynn, getting to the wrongdoing at the top of the FBI. Now this yeah. news this morning, a federal appeals court yesterday announcing that it is going to be considering the Department of Justice's move to dismiss charges against Michael Flynn. This adds yet another twist to this case. So now they're going to reconsider this? He's not out of I the know. woods yet, Congressman? No, it's so wrong, and, and, and it's been so long for, for General Flynn. And what they have done to this individual, when they systematically targeted him after the election in November 2016, because they knew, they knew that the cover-up the, the cover that they were planning to hide what they tried to do to the Trump campaign, they knew Michael Flynn would figure it out. And so they decided, right after the election, we got to get Michael Flynn and what they put him through. Think about this, Maria. Between Election Day and Inauguration Day, 38 people, 49 separate times unmasked Michael Flynn's name as they're figuring out how they're going to try to attack him, how they're going to set him up, which they ultimately do on, on January 24th when they sneak two agents into the White House and set him up. This needs to end, this terrible saga that he's had to go through and his family has had to go through. It needs to end. He's a, served our country for three decades, and what he's had to go through is just wrong. So let's hope it gets over with soon. It should have been over with a long time ago. Well why, well, why isn't it? And why aren't your colleagues on the left acknowledging all of the wrongdoing that has taken place? I haven't heard a peep out of them about any of this. And this is the biggest political scandal of our generation. No, it is, uh, but th th they can't admit it. 
Uh, they, they, put, they invested so much into this. They had the insurance policy that Peter Strzok talked about. They had the text message where he said, we'll stop Trump. They were out to stop President Trump. The American people decided that wasn't going to be the case. 63 million of them came and voted for President Trump on November 8, 2016 and elected him. Then they go through the cover-up and they, they continue to go after Flynn because that's part of this, this covering up and, and them trying to still still believe, even though there's no truth to it, that there was something there. There was never anything there. The investigation never should have started. There was no proper predicate at all. But they're just not going to give it up. Jerry Nadler and, 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 you know, this is the same, this is the same guy who thinks that Antifa is a myth, the same guy who said that on the House floor that Antifa is imaginary. So um, they're just going to keep attacking Michael Flynn. Let's hope this, this the, finally, this, this final action in court, let's hope Michael Flynn wins and we can move on. How, how much time do you think your committee, the Judiciary Committee, has spent on investigating Donald Trump versus the time that you've spent looking at things like judges, like China, like national security issues? When After the Democrats won the House majority at the end of 18, Congressman, what happened in yeah. 2019? Can you give us a rough estimate no. of how many hearings and, 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 and attention was paid to investigating Donald Trump versus everything else? Uh, Maria, almost everything, almost all the time was spent going after the president. Remember when Jerry Nadler sent 81 different letters, 60-some different people and other entities that he sent letters to? Complete, total fishing expedition, nothing, got nothing. The whole two-year Mueller investigation, nothing. Everything they have tried. When they, remember when they brought in John Dean? That was supposed to be a blockbuster hearing. Terrible. Remember when they brought in Bob Mueller? That was a terrible. So time, just this past week. They go after the attorney general when they let him speak. You know, first of all, they didn't play all our video at the start of that hearing. Then they wouldn't let Bill Barr answer the questions. And yeah. th there was even a point where they didn't even want to let him right. take a restroom break. But in spite of all that, he kicked their tail and he's doing a great job as attorney general. So they've been constantly on this issue and not focusing on the issues that truly matter to the American people. Yeah, well, this is the American people's business, and people should be outraged by that, by the way. I want to take a break, but when we come back, I want to ask you how far up the line you think it went in terms of this spying on the Trump campaign, because Valerie Jarrett had some thoughts about that. I'm going to play you what she said to me this week. Stay with us. More with Congressman Jim Jordan when we come back.